This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Jonathan Flint talks about his research on psychiatric genetics. Hello, Jonathan. Hi, Anna. Can you just tell us about the genetic basis of psychiatric disorders? Every psychiatric disorder that's studied, to some extent, has a genetic contribution. We know this from twin studies and family studies. The contribution varies according to the disorder. So schizophrenia and autism have a relatively high contribution. About 80% of the variation is due to variation at a genetic level, whereas the conditions I work on, anxiety and depression, are less genetically determined with heritabilities of about 40%. And to put that in perspective, it's about the same as many other common illnesses. Type 2 diabetes would be an example. So why does your research focus on anxiety and depression? We work on anxiety and depression because those are the commonest psychiatric conditions. There have been a large number of epidemiological studies across the world. They all come to more or less the same conclusion, that depression has a prevalence between 9 to 16%, varies according to gender. So for women, I would expect, uh, in, on average, one in five to six women would have one episode of major depression in their lifetime. And can your research lead to the development of better therapies? So at the moment, we're not very good at treating depression. I'd expect if I see a patient coming in in a clinic, that I might have about a 50% chance of getting them better within, say, two to three years. It's not a very successful uh, approach. We have um, indications that there is some biological problems, psychology as well, and we know from the genetics that there has to be some genetic predisposition. So if we were to understand which genetic variants were contributing to this disorder, then the idea is that might put us on the path to helping our patients better by developing new therapies. So what are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? The most important has been the ability to interrogate entire genomes to see association between genetic variants and disease. And this has been pioneered for other conditions asthma, diabetes, hypertension. And recently it's been successful in schizophrenia and autism. These approaches have only just become uh, possible with depression and anxiety, largely because we need well-characterised, very large sample sizes, which are very hard to collect. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Our research, we hope, will lead to our ability to make better diagnoses and potentially to develop new therapies for this very common and very disabling condition. If you think of this on a sort of global scale, the impact of depression comes second only to ischemic heart disease in terms of effect on people's lives. It's not to say that um, the mortality is similar, but the morbidity, the extent to which it affects your ability to get on with your life, is, is tremendous. And it's relatively underfunded. So if we think of that in terms of the amount of money that would, would go in, whereas cancer and heart disease receive large amounts of money, there is relatively little research that goes into depression. And one reason for that is because uh, there have been few leads, few really substantial ways into this. And that's changing. And that's why genetics is important, because it gives us a real lead for the first time. And finally, how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? Our research is a paradigm of this because we move from working with patients, very careful phenotypic characterization, through to the genetic analysis. And once we have that, we'll be in a position to understand what the molecular basis is, try to understand the mechanisms that give rise to the condition. And with that information, we want to go back into the clinic and improve care for our patients. Thank you, Jonathan. You're welcome.